from 2016. Athletes are usually finished by their 40s. Blue-collar workers look to management positions as they slow down in their 50s. White-collar workers go to 67 or, in case of judges, 75 or so. Riders don't tend to peak until they are in their 30s and they tend to keep their gift until the end. Barry Spur still has much to offer, but Spur's career, stellar, has been curtailed by an ancient curse. Not that he is conservative, but that he is seen as being one, and it highlights something that needs to be addressed. Australia is blessed with the tradition of free speech, but our institutions are being nobbled because the reality is Australia does not have free speech. As Spur pointed out recently at the Sydney Institute, October the 6th, with an introduction by Miranda Devine, the issue of the denunciations of him based on the criminal publishing of personal emails and their misrepresentation by the extreme left-wing publisher are not a new phenomenon. One example Spur gave was T.S. Eliot's denunciation as being an anti-Semitic bigot based on a few words in the 1920s, but Eliot's life and work doesn't suggest that. Others, who were better candidates for the slur, escaped the label apparently because they were of the left-wing tribe. It is not the fierce contest of ideas that is being debated at the moment, but tribal warfare. Only conservatives are still trying to fight with ideas, because that battle is the only place where the war can be won. The great debate, or Western dialectic, is some two and a half thousand years old and not going away soon. But we are being sidetracked by a corruption of leftist ideals, which seems successful but leaves a wasteland in its wake. Australia does not have free speech, or a justice system, equal rights, or much else, because those are illusory ideals. Laws don't create them, but can impede them. One major impediment to free speech is the Racial Vilification Code, Section 18C. It is a badly written piece of legislation that undermines free speech. Rachel Ball, Vice President of Human Rights Law Commission, asked who was more free, Andrew Bolt after his trial or 18C for 18C or children in detention. Rachel clearly feels that any injustice Bolt feels is vastly outweighed by detainees. But Rachel's argument was misplaced. In fact, the trial of Bolt was an injustice. And the truth is, the elimination of 18C won't restore free speech. The appalling treatment of Spur was not an 18C issue. But the appalling, cowardly reaction of Sydney University administration was a symptom of how 18C has eroded the cultural asset of free speech imbued by Australia's majestic progress. Spur has retired from being Australia's only professor of poetry, but we are blessed he isn't finished. I suggest Red Gum Ward vote for David Daniel Ball, and after asking your local councillor about their views on Trump, same-sex marriage and greyhounds, try and find out what it is they will do to make garbage collection cheaper and more efficient. Ask how they will make business more profitable. Ask what they will do to help address crime. Ask what they will do to improve public transport issues locally. From 2015, the recent supremacy of the left has left a poisoned chalice of free speech bound with rules. Where once the left adored the violence of Che, Pol Pot, Mao, or Stalin, now they quiver in fear of being offended or face-to-face -face with their victims in debate. The quivering, cowardly left have hidden strength. They tore down a good man as prime minister and installed a suit. For some, at the moment... The sex party has more credibility.